Hi there. Now if you watched the previous video in this series, I showed you how to find the mean mu from a normal distribution when you were given the variance and a probability of being greater than or less than an observed value. Well, I've got another example here which you might like to try. It offers different kind of challenge. And uh, if you'd like to have a go, just give you a moment to pause the video. What we've got here is a random variable x. It's distributed normally with a mean mu and the variance is 25. So the standard deviation would be 5. 5 squared giving us 25, the variance. And the 30th percentile is 18. So we've got to find the mean mu. Well, we can either use tables or we can use a calculator. I'll be demonstrating this using the Casio class Wiz calculator, but I'm sure you'll find similar functions on other calculators. Right, okay, so the first thing I'd want to do then is just sketch the normal distribution graph for the random variable x. It's got a mean mu here. Now we're talking about the 30th percentile is 18. So that means that the probability of being less than 18 is 30% or 0.3. So that means that the 18 must be to the left of the mean mu, okay? So that the area shaded below this observed value of 18 is 30% or 0.3. I'll just write this in as 30%. Now if you watched the previous video you know that we should now turn to the standardized normal distribution. Something like this Z which is distributed normally with a mean of 0 and the variance is 1, so that means the standard deviation would be 1. And we need to get the observed z value from here that corresponds with the observed 18 here. Now, if I was to project down here, we've got a problem. And that problem is that this observed value here, z, is on the left of 0 here. And our tables just give us observed values to the right of zero. And we need to know this area to the right of z, that area being p, which represents the probability. Well, I know that this area here is 30% or 0.3. But what I can do is look at the symmetry of the graph. I can look at the corresponding z if I reflect it in this axis here. Then the area to the right here, if we make that 30% or 0.3, then let's say this value we call Z1 and we'll call this one Z2. Whatever Z1 is, Z2 will be the negative value of it. So looking under this column for P here, we can see that we've got 0 0.3000 and the corresponding Z value to that is 0.5244. So what we've got then is that Z1 okay, is equal to 0.5244 and that would therefore mean that Z2 must be the negative of it, minus 0.5244. And so we can just now turn to the transformation. That transformation is Z equals the observed value X minus the mean mu divided by sigma. Okay? You should be familiar with that. As I say, if not, do go back to my earlier tutorials on the standardized normal distribution. And from this, if we multiply both sides by sigma, we therefore have that sigma z equals x minus mu. And then we can just add mu to both sides and subtract sigma z. So we end up with mu equaling x minus sigma z. 
And so all we need to do is substitute our values in now. So the observed value x is the 18 here. We've got minus sigma. Sigma, the standard deviation, would be 5. We've got the variance here of 25. So the standard deviation is the square root of 25. So that's 5 times the z value, which is minus 0 0.5244. Just squeeze that in there. And if you work that out, you'll end up with 20.622. And rounded to one decimal place, that's going to be 20.6 to 1 dp, or three significant figures, OK? Now, the other way you could do this is using the Casio class Wiz calculator or a similar calculator that has the inverse normal function on it. If you're using the class with calculator, just check out that you're in the right menu. So we press the menu button and I showed you earlier that you need to select seven, which is the probability distributions. And if you do that, you're looking at option three, the inverse normal here on this menu. So if we put that in as three, what we now have is that the area which represents the probability of being less than a particular observed value. Well, we're looking at the standardized normal distribution. So we need the area to the left of the observed value Z2, which is 30% or 0.3. So we just need to put 0.3 in. Okay, press equals to enter it. You'll see that this has the standard deviation already set at 1. And also, if I put the cursor down, you'll see that the mean mu is 0. These would be the two values that we have for the standardized normal distribution, z. So we can get the z2 value here directly just by pressing equals, and you'll see it comes out at minus 0.5244. So with the use of the calculator here, we don't need to think about the symmetry point of view as we would have had to have done if we were using the tables. So thanks for listening and I hope that's been of some value to you that you can use this method, either the tables or the calculator, to work out questions by modelling your methods on the example that I've given you.